Hi, this is us again, and we are back with the latest updated of ASEAN News. Myanmar coup leader defends military actions on Union Day. Myanmar's military leader Ming Oh Lin defends the army ousting of an elected civilian government that take over last year was to protect enemies inside and outside the country. The leader of the military regime took power on February 1st school in 2021 at the ceremony for Myanmar's Union Day. The parade honoring the army units and civil servants were joined by delegations from Karen, Chin, and Kaye states where ethnic and anti-military armed conflicts rage. Ming Olin repeated the army's line that it took power because the election commission ignored electoral fraud carried out in late 2020 by Nobel Peace Laureate Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy. A decade of democratic reforms and economic progress in Myanmar came to an end last year with a military coup. Myanmar Army de facto record weight lost by Chin rebels. A Myanmar Army officer who defected and fled the country has detailed battlefield losses to rebels in the southern part of Chin state with at least 50 soldiers killed and 200 badly wounded in 2021 by opposition fighters with homemade weapons. He says he switched sides after hearing reports by colleagues of military abuses during clashes last year. He also showed Reuters some 30 classified army documents backed up his version of recent events in southern Jin state where civilians opposed the coup have taken up arms and are working with established ethnic insurgent groups. <laughs> According to Kang Tu Win, groups of fighters began forming in Chin State in the weeks after the February 1st coup, but the Tatmadaw felt the full force of the rebellion after a convoy of seven vehicles were ambushed near the town of Mindat on May 14, 2021. The fighting in the southern areas of Chin, involving hastily formed Chin Land Defense Force guerrilla groups, has been fierce. Kang Tu Win says at least 20 Myanmar soldiers were killed in the May 14 ambush. He says defectors were under no obligation to the defense group, but they asked them about Tatmadaw operation before moving them to safety. Philippines reopens border after lowest COVID-19 restrictions. The Philippines welcomed back foreign tourists nearly two years after it shut its borders to control the spread of the coronavirus. Personnel in military uniforms were seen directing arriving travelers at Ninoy Aquino International Airport, some of whom came to the Philippines to reunite with family members. At the tourist spot in capital Manila, horse carriage drivers and bicycle rental operators were preparing for what they hoped would be a steady flow of vacationers to help revive their incomes. The archipelago nation of more than 7,000 islands had planned to reopen earlier in December, but that was aborted over concerns about the Omicron variant. Citizens of 150 countries that have visa-free entry to the Philippines will be allowed to enter. The Philippines open to fully vaccine foreign tourists. Philippines reopens its border to fully vaccinated foreign tourists from non-visa required countries. As it sees a downtrend of infections, the country is ready to welcome tourists. Booths have been set up at airports to assist foreign travelers with health protocols being in place and tourism workers fully vaccinated. Foreign travelers will no longer be required to quarantine if they are fully vaccinated.
They need to show proof of vaccination and a negative RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours before arrival. Tourists are also required to have travel insurance for the duration of their stay. Tourism leaders say that since last week there have been inquiries coming from North America, Europe and Middle East, which have more liberal travel restrictions compared to Asian countries. The Philippines has more than 7,000 islands and offers tourists pristine beaches and world-famous diving spots. More than a million tourist workers have lost their jobs since the pandemic. Residents of Fukushima protest against plan to discharge water contaminated by nuclear energy. Residents in Japan's Fukushima prefecture held a rally against Tokyo Electric Power Coast Nuclear Contaminated Water Discharging Plan before the schedule arrived of an investigation team of the International Atomic Energy Agency. TEPCO says previously that it plans to release contaminated water about a kilometer offshore through an undersea tunnel, but the plan failed to dispel the concerns of local residents. Protests hold in Fukushima's Iwaki city, where more than a dozen of residents raised banners with slogans calling for cancellation of the discharging plan and protection of the ocean. Representatives of local civil group members of environmental protection organization and visionary personnel from all walks of life made speeches successively voicing their opposition to the plan. Locals says the Japanese government and TEPCO have failed to pay enough attention to their opposition for a long time and they hope that more information will be disclosed during the upcoming International Atomic Energy Agency investigation trip so as to raise more people's awareness for marine environment protection. Japan Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says TEPCO will be allowed to release nuclear contaminated water from Fukushima 1 into the Pacific Ocean starting in 2023. International Atomic Energy Agency and Japan meet to review Fukushima's water release plan. Officials from the Japanese government and International Atomic Energy Agency meet to review the safety of the plant released of the treated water from Japan's crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The IAEA review is carried out in objective. The International Atomic Energy Agency's work will include technical discussion in Tokyo and visit to the site of the accident where task force members will observe how the treated water is handled and stored in tanks. Tokyo Electric Power Co Holding says in December it aimed to build an underwater tunnel to the sea to release more than 1 million tons of irradiated water from the site after treatment in effort to set to start around the spring of 2023. The water will be processed to remove all radioactive contamination, except tritium, which will be diluted to a seventh of the World Health Organization standards for drinking water. Though nuclear plants worldwide routinely discharge water with tritium in it, the plan has steered concern from neighbors China and South Korea worried over food safety. South Korea carries out self-treatment after increase in Omicron cases in the country. South Korea says patients with mild coronavirus symptoms will have to treat themselves, aiming to free up medical resources for more serious cases, as the new infections hit a fresh high because of the fast-spreading Omicron variant. Authorities will only provide care to COVID-19 patients aged 60 and older or with underlying conditions, while others monitor themselves and seek medical help from designated clinics if their conditions worsen. Medical kits including an oxygen saturation measurement device, a thermometer, and a fever remedy previously available to all patients who treat themselves at home will now be distributed only to priority groups. The Korean Disease Control and Prevention Agency says South Korea's daily number of new cases hit another daily record of 54,122, bringing its total infections to 1,185,361 among its 52 million people. China and Mexico congratulate each other on the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations. Yes. 
Chinese President Xi Jinping and Mexican President Andreas Manuel López Obrador exchanges congratulatory messages to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relationship between the two countries. In his message, she notes that both China and Mexico are countries with time-honored civilizations and history, and the friendly exchanges between their people date back to ancient times. The Chinese president also says China and Mexico have stood together and extended a helping hand to each other, setting a good example of international solidarity in the fight against the pandemic. She stresses that he attaches great importance to the development of China-Mexico relations and stands ready to work with López Obrado to take the 50th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between the two countries as an opportunity to join hands built on past achievement and forged ahead into the future. López Obrado says in his message that over the past 50 years, Mexico and China have jointly forged an unbreakable friendship and carried out extensive exchanges and cooperation in politics, economy, education and other areas as exemplified by the two countries' joint fights against the COVID-19 pandemic. Hong Kong receives full support from central government to build an epidemic prevention center. A senior Hong Kong official says that the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government has full support from the central Chinese government to curb the fifth resurgence of COVID-19. Li led a delegation of Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government to meet with mainland officials and experts in Shenzhen, where they discussed ways to help Hong Kong to curb the latest resurgence of COVID-19. Li expresses thanks to the central government and neighboring Guangdong province, stressing that the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government will give priority to safeguarding people's health. According to the Data Center for Health Protection in the Chinese city released, Hong Kong registered 1,540 new cases of COVID-19 over the past 24 hours, a new daily high since the latest epidemic resurgence. And that's the end for today's news. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'd like to thank Julius Postu for the wardrobe as well. And enjoy your weekend, everyone.